God is so good. Yes, he is. <sighs> okay. I guess I want to put all this in the message, so we're going to go ahead and just get started. So if you're ready to hear some more word, then I want you to repeat after me and say, I have ears to hear, ears to hear. What, the what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to me today. I have eyes to see what the Spirit of the Lord is revealing to me today. My heart is prepared to receive what the Spirit of the Lord has for me today. Today, I am leaving changed. How many of you believe that? That you can leave changed? change today. You know, God has started something. It's been said this morning. I want to reiterate it because it's important for why he gave this message for today. So he has started something. Revival is coming because we are a people who are seeking God. The thing is that God knows that some are still struggling with your faith to believe all that he wants to do in and through your life. See, it's, he's got to have a people he can move through. When God moves, he uses a person. He uses a man or a woman, right? And so he wants to increase your faith today. Okay. He's been doing it since the beginning of the service. All through the entire service, everything he's been telling you, everything that we've sung, everything that he's been doing is to help increase your faith because somebody else needs you. Okay, and so we're going to read quite a bit of scripture today. I'm not going to Hebrew and Greek it. I, you know, I, in fact, I'm like, God, are you sure? Because, you know, I, I'm a teacher, so that's my automatically think. So I had to get my brain out of the way, get self out of the way and say, okay, oh, what do you want to do, God? Okay, so we're going we're gonna to read a lot of scripture, but in a lot of it's going to be out of the Amplified, but the whole reason is why. Uh, faith comes by what? Hearing. hearing. And hearing or understanding comes by what? The word of God. And so, because faith needs to increase today, he's given me some scriptures that will help your faith increase. Now, what do you need it to increase for? To, rem to know who, what he says about you. Why? Because of what he's going to do through you. Okay? We have to believe him. We have to believe what God says so that he can do what he says he'll do. Okay? Now I'm already getting dry in the mouth. Goodness. So, now, <laughs> Nate brought out the Amplified. I have quite a bit of Amplified today. <laughs> and so, um, it's just the way, you know, some just stand out to you more than others at times. And this week, it was the Amplified that stood out more. So, we're going to jump right in and get started. And I want you to put your ears on and hear what God is saying into your heart today. Because it, I, it, this isn't actually a really long message. It's really just because it's what God wants to say. So, James 1, and starting in verse 17, it says, Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of lights, the creator and the sustainer of he the heavens, in whom there is no variation. There's no rising or setting or shadow cast by his turning, for he is perfect and never changes. It was of his own will that he gave us birth as his children by the word of truth, so that what that we would be a kind of first fruits his cre of his creatures, a prime example of what he created to be set apart for himself, sanctified, made holy for his divine purposes. So if you're listening to this message and you have been born again, then James is talking about you. You. Our Father God has set apart for himself for his divine purposes. He has set you up to be an example to others, to, to, to what it looks like to be one of God's people. Why? Because he needs a witness in the earth. And he says, that's you. Okay, you're still not believing. Go ahead, we're going to keep on going. All right. Now, before these couple of uh, verses in James, it, 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 here, he is talking about how, you know, we, whenever, we should never say that when we're tempted, that we're tempted of God. 
okay? He's like, if you're tempted, it's your own lust that's drawing you away, right? And it leads to sin, which leads to death. And so that kind of death separates us from God. We know that there is, ultimately, there's a death that will either, you know, if you the second death will be eternally separated from God. But anytime there's death in our life, if it's not the right kind of death, it can separate us from God. That's what this is. However, we in this place are choosing a death that is necessary to stay close to God. That death is to self. You know, we've been talking about it, right? And so when we die to self, this is the thing that we need to see today is that we don't stay consumed with it anymore right? We're not consumed with the thought of, I got to die to self today. I got to die to self today. We die to self and we focus on what we're supposed to focus on. Self is no longer the focus, correct? That's the whole point of dying to it. It's not the focus anymore, okay? So then what should our focus be? Where Apostle Paul tells us in Colossians chapter 3, that name was breaking out. That's why I was laughing. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to be in here for a little bit. And so in Colossians 3, it says, and we're going to start in verse 1, it says, Therefore, if you have been raised with Christ to a new life, sharing in his resurrection from the dead, keep seeking the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind and keep focused habitually on the things above, the heavenly things, not on the things that are on this earth, which have only temporal value. For you died to this world and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who appears, who, who is our life appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. So I, what Apostle Paul is saying here, I'm gonna, I'm, we're not gonna get a nitpick through all of this. I'm just gonna kind of sum up what God wants you to get out of it, okay? And so since we have died to self, all right, and we are raised with Christ in this new life, then we should be focusing on what God is doing and what he is saying and not our ways to make our own life better. Come on, why? Because our, our own life, they're temporary. Not to mention he takes care of us already. So we can say it this way. Our focus now, as Reverend Connie would say, is to be about our father's business. All right? I know we've all heard this before, but God is increasing your faith today so that you believe it. Okay? So that's what we're thinking. We're, we're supposed to be thinking on God's business, not our own. So I want you to hear today, you are his. You're his. You belong to God. No matter how many days self tries to raise its ugly head and you have to die again. You belong to God. Amen. That's right. It's not because of how great you are. It's not because of how much you do. It's because you put your complete trust and reliance on Jesus Christ for your salvation. And at that moment, you became grafted in to the family of God. Now, if we lose our trust in him, we let go. Come on. You belong to him. I know all of you are sitting here going, yeah, I know that. Do you know that? You're not your own anymore. <laughs> Remember what Connie says, that's why he, has to be, he takes care of me because I belong to him. But that's exactly right. We don't have to be caught up in our own temporal lives because God takes care of us. He will. We'll get into that more. But I want you to hear today. God wants you to hear you are his. You're his. 
Now, I, I will say that after this particular portion of scripture, Apostle Paul did find the need to address the, you know, the need to die to self again, uh, you know, after he got done telling us that we have a new life, because sometimes we just need to be reminded, right? And so in Colossians 3, 5, he says, so put to death and deprive of power the evil, deprive of power, the evil longings of your earthly body with its sensual, self-centered instincts, immorality, impurity, sinful passion, evil desire, and greed, which is really a kind of idolatry when you, all you think about is money and what, how much you can get. Why? Because it replaces your devotion to God. So when, if we're struggling to die to self, I want you to hear today, this God wants you to hear today to maybe help you that, you know, if we recognize that self just wants to be God. And God says you're his. Then we got to kill the other God that wants to be in our life. We got to die to it, right? And so it, it, it ought to help us. Who do we want to serve? Who is really our God? Well, he says he is, so we die to self. Now, okay, we're not focusing on that, so let's go down. Let's go on. Uh, we're going to jump down to verse 12. It says, so as God's own chosen people who are holy and set apart for his purpose and well beloved by God himself, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, which has the power to endure whatever injustice or unpleasantness comes with good temper, bearing graciously with one another and willingly forgiving each other if you have a cause, you know, somebody that you need to forgive somebody, just as the Lord has forgiven you. Beyond all of these things, put on and wrap yourselves in unselfish love, which is the perfect bond of unity. For everything bound together in agreement is bound together in agreement when each one seeks the best for others. I know that was a lot there. But as God's people, we need to know that we are loved by God and set apart for his purpose. And our lives are now to seek the best for others because that's what God's doing. That is his business. So hear this again. You, each one of you, you, Stevie, you're well loved. You don't have to worry who's going to take care of you anymore because he will. We don't have to worry about our life. He has already given us all the promises. They're ours for the taking. Amen. Yeah, right. How many times do we try to save our own life? We try to do things for our life when God says, I've already given you a whole lot of promises. 8,630 promises. And you don't have to try to save it yourself. You don't have to try to heap up heaps for yourself. I've already given it to you. Let me take care of you. Well, we have to have faith, right? The promises come by faith. We either believe them or we don't. Because we begin to know that, we begin to know that God is the one who takes care of us. We don't have to try to figure out our own life. If we know him and if we are about his business every day and we are seeking his face and what he's doing and we know the promises are already ours, that every day we're up and going, okay, now there's somebody else out there that we can be about, about God's business for their life. Why? Because God wants to, other people to know that they are loved. Right. Come on. He loves you, yeah. John. But he wants you to help somebody else know that they are loved too. Right. 
He wants all of us who say, you're mine. But there's a lot of people out there that don't know that they can be mine. And I want you to go out there and let them know they can be mine. And I want to take care of them too. That's right. I want to bring them into the purpose for their life, just like I bring you into the purpose for your life. Apostle Paul says to put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, and unselfish love. And how, much, how many know that we can't do any of that in ourselves? That takes the Spirit of God to come and work that in us, to give us that. We have died to self. Then we get to verse 16 and 17. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Now we around here know that verse 16, we've heard it before. In fact, we've heard of it lots of times. Let the word become life in your life. That is what Apostle Paul is saying. So I, when the word is in our head, then all we can give to somebody else is knowledge and information, and religion, and ultimately self. That, that's all we have to give. If the word's not life, and that's not really being in union with Jesus and his mission, right? He says here, in, in whatever you do in word or deed, do it in, my, in the name of the Lord Jesus. It will, in order to do anything in his name, it has to be in line with his purpose and mission. What he's doing. And what, is, what would he be doing? Whatever the father's doing. Right. right. That, and that's it. That's right. So uh, <laughs> when the word is life, we don't have to think about doing it. I, I know that every one of you can think about your life and go, you know, there's some areas that I know the word has become life and I don't need to think about it anymore. It just is who I am. Right. It's who I am. I, that's all I do. But other areas, I'm like, oh, God, okay. I know your word says this. <sighs> but I, I, it's still just in my head. <sighs> I want it here. I want it life. I want it to be the spirit of law so that it's a lifestyle. But I'm still trying to figure out the application. Okay? So... What do we do? You know, we have to apply, right? So I'm going to read it in a, out of James. We're going to go back to James for a moment. And starting with James 1 and starting with verse 21, it says, So get rid of all uncleanness and all that remains of wickedness. And with the humble spirit, receive the word of God, which is implanted, actually rooted in your heart, which is able to save your soul. But prove yourselves doers of the word actively and continually obeying God's precepts and not merely listeners, you know, who hear the word but fail to internalize its meaning. So and when that happens, we delude ourselves. Come on, we think we have something we don't, right? And I, I think every one of us can, can recognize that in our own life at times. So what is he saying here? He's saying, receive the word humbly, Take God at his word. How many times have you heard people say, well, I don't know that that's true for today. A lot of denominations will tell you healing is not true for today. The apostles and prophets have passed away. Why? Because they're not taking God at his word. They're not believing that if he said it, it's the truth. What have we read or heard in his word and haven't taken him at it? God, I know you said it, but do you really mean it for my life? Maybe it's not really 
valid for me because of dot, 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 meaning that, you know, he's not big enough to do it in my life because I'm something extra special that the cross didn't, wasn't enough for. That's really what that thinking ends up being. So we have to receive it. And then, and we do that by believing, right? And then obeying. We got to act on it. <laughs> the word will never become life in our life if we don't believe it and obey it. I was reminded of something that Reverend Honey had said a long time ago, you know, understanding. Understanding is not a prerequisite for obedience. A lot of times we think, okay, well, I don't fully know what you're saying, God, so how do I obey it? We'll do the best you can with what you do know. That's what we do. We have to continue to take the word and say, okay, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the best I can and I trust that you're going to open it up to me so that way I can truly apply this in my life in every way, but I'm going to walk out whatever I can do. I'm going to walk it out. I, I, you know, <laughs> we can't decide, if we decide to do nothing because we don't think we get it yet, that we'll never do anything. How many times that I, you know, I, I would say to Bishop from fourth year Bible school, I've heard the word, I heard the word, I heard the word. But as I started to just do it and walk it out and things would happen in my life, the, my eyes would be open and all of a sudden I'd see it for what it was. But in the process, I did the best I could with what I knew. We have to start somewhere. How many listened to the, the Sabbath, the Torah teaching this week? So Bishop talked about one of the items was, <laughs> what's God looking for? Our obedience. So how does a word that we just heard about seeking what's best for others become life in our life? We got to do it, Right? God, you are so good. I thank you. I'm not, we're not done, but you are God. I thank you for these. These men and women that you said belong to you, God. But it's only your spirit that can touch any one of their hearts. It doesn't matter how many words I say. It's only you. So I thank you that your word goes forth and penetrates the hearts of all of us, God, that we're changed today. That faith is increased. Because you know who you see them to be. In Romans 15, Apostle Paul, he, he, he tells us some things that are just powerful. And I'm going to read this particular, just a few verses out of the message translation. And it says, those of us who are strong and able in faith need to step in and lend a hand to those who falter. And that falter there is really other translations say weak in faith. Now, the song we sang earlier, part of that was, you're restoring the weak. But he, he has to have a strong, in faith people to help the weak. And not just to do what is most convenient for us. Strength, for ser strength is for service, not for status. 
So each one of us needs to look after the good of the people around us, asking ourselves, how can I help? That's exactly what Jesus did. He didn't make it easy for himself by avoiding people's troubles, but waited right in and helped out. <laughs> now, the context of this, Apostle Paul, if you read the scriptures before it, you know, he's, he's talking about people who are strong in faith and who are weak in faith and that we ought to do everything we do regardless of where we're at in our faith unto the Lord, okay? But he also mentions that the strong in faith should not be a stumbling block for the weak. And, um, and he, he uses some examples, but I want to use one example before we move into some more of this, of, of where this house is very strong in the faith and how we have helped others who are weaker in faith to be able to increase faith. Why? Because it's going to help you see a picture of how God can use you in different ways, right? So w one area that we are very strong in the faith in this house is we celebrate the feast of the Lord. And I am just amazed at how quiet it is here today. So we believe strongly that these are what God has said to do. Come on, how many believe God, you said it, so we're gonna do it. I take you at your word because you have listed in Leviticus 23 all the different feasts, that the seven feasts that we celebrate th throughout the year, and we're gonna do them. We take you at your word, right? The, most of the people in this house are that, and even you online, many of you online. Now, we have had many people come through this, this place, whether online or in the house, over the years who knew nothing of the feast. That's right. okay. Knew absolutely nothing. They had faith, believing Jesus Christ is their Savior, but didn't know they'd been taught something else their whole life. The other things they celebrated, the other things they did, they believed it was what they were supposed to do. And so their faith, they were weak in faith toward the feast because they didn't know it, but they had faith toward something else. So uh, did we condemn these people when they came? No. What did we do? Because if, if we would have condemned them, it would have caused them to stumble where they were. And we wanted to increase their faith to what God had said, right? So what did we do? Well, we loved them. We accepted them and we taught them the word. Now, it takes some time to answering a lot of questions. We have one lady that's with us who she's had to go through that and had a lot of questions. And it was a joy for any one of us to answer those questions. Why? Because she wanted to increase in faith. She desired to know the truth. And so that's what we did. We would help in that area. You know, and now uh, we have... Uh, um, because of being able to do this, we have many churches in our community who are going to be coming together as a community of churches, one church, to celebrate and keep the Passover. Amen. And this is the second time. Now, why did that happen? Because Bishop laid his life down in order to love them and teach them and continue to give to them until their faith increased to the point that they said, yes, let's keep the Passover. I wanna, uh, we want to do this. Something that they never knew about before. Okay, so that we, because we who were strong in faith in that were able to help those who were weak that didn't know. Now that's one area, but it's something we've been strong here in. And we continued to do it even when others didn't, which was a witness to the community, right? How many times do all of us need to hear the same word just in another way in order to get it? Well, probably more times than we even realize we do. I mean, my goodness, how many times have, has, um, how many times has God given us a different word about evangelism every week just in another way? But you know what? It's because he knows it only takes one time. That's 
that somebody will have the light turned on. And as the light turns on, all of a sudden, it's not just trying to evangelize, it's running, it's doing, because the word has become life in that moment. All up until then, we're walking it out the best we can. You know, God, I'm failing again today, but I'm trying. I'm talking to this person today. It doesn't seem to be going anywhere, probably because I have too much self in it again. Die to self, die to self, remember, die to self. Yeah, come on, how do you walk out your faith? It, it, when we're a little bit weak in faith in the area of evangelism, not, you know, we try, so we're pretty weak because it's not going anywhere. But the reality is God says, but it only takes one time. So I'm going to keep telling you till you get it, because when you get it, you're not going to have to say, I got to die to self. You'll do it. And you're already running, doing what I've already told you because you're about the father's business, right? This is what he is saying today. It only takes one time. And guess what? Today can be your day. It can be your day. I want you to know that you're mine, Kevin. You're mine. And because you're mine, I have put my spirit in you. And because you have my spirit in you and you have my word in you, you can go out and I'm with you. So wherever you go, you don't have to worry about what to say. I will give you what to say. You just seek me. That's all it is. Seek me. If you seek me, I will tell you what to say. And I'll do the work. That's it. That's it. That's it. Faith comes by what? Faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing comes by what? The word of God. As you understand what God is saying to you, faith comes. God wants you to be strong in faith so that you can help those who are not. Why you? Why you? Lana, why you? Why you? <laughs> because you belong to him. That's why you. And because you are choosing to die to self daily. That's why you. You are choosing to let God be God in your life. That's why you. So he set you apart for his purposes which is to get right in there in the middle of people's lives and not be afraid to get dirty, but knowing that God can use you in those moments to be a help, a real help to that person. We're just his vessels that he wants to move through. And you know what? If we belong to him, then he ought to have a right to. You ought to have a right to use and do with what you want what is yours. So if you belong to God, he has a right to use you for his purposes to move through. He has a right because he says, I, you're, I, I am the owner of you. I've taken ownership of you. Now I'm going to use you today to talk to this person and I'm going to pour out and I'm going to cause some, a change in their life that they didn't even know was possible. And guess what? You didn't do it. Right. I did because you're mine. You're mine. God wants us to get right in there and help those who may be struggling to believe, weak in faith, or don't know what to believe because my goodness, there's voices everywhere, right? We, are, we're, we hear things all day long. Everybody wants you to believe what they believe. Everybody does. There is nobody who doesn't have an opinion or a belief that they want you on their side believing what they said. 
And people have to deal with that. And if they don't know God, they don't know what to believe. Unless we tell them. Now, something that I, I learned recently is that, you know what, just because somebody is struggling with doubt, or I should say struggling to believe, it doesn't mean that they're saying no to God. It means their faith is so weak they can't see beyond their circumstances. That's all they can see is what's in front of them. Now, unbelief is different, but we're talking about doubt right now, which is a wavering. Okay, okay it's different. A doubt is a wavering. It's like you want to believe, but all you can see is this. And so it's like, God, now if we can't, God can't do anything with doubt. He can't move in with anything with doubt. However, he doesn't mean that they've said no. And so he just might send you and say, go to that person who is experiencing doubt. You who are strong in the faith so you can help them because they're weak. I want to restore the weak so that they can be strong. You know, Peter, Peter thought he had great faith. Peters generally do, even when they don't. Uh -oh. <laughs> we find out the hard way every time. <laughs> but he thought he had great faith when he asked Jesus to let him step out and come to him on the water. The thing is, is it didn't take him very long before he got his eyes off of Jesus. You know, the heavenly things, where our focus should be. And on the earthly things, the waves, the, the circumstances, the thing he was in, he was in it. And that's all he could see. And he started to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. You know what Jesus said? He, he didn't say, you who have no faith. That's not what he said. He said, oh, ye of little faith, why did you doubt? Because doubt causes faith to decrease, not increase. It weakens faith. So if Peter did have greater faith to step out, he had to have enough faith to step out on the water and walk three steps. But as soon as he, doubt came in, it immediately dropped to little faith in a moment and he started to sink but you know what what else Jesus didn't say you know what you got yourself in this mess get yourself out he didn't say that no he saved him he saved Peter what was that yeah when he called on him exactly but you know what that's why so many times you've heard from this pulpit that we have got to be every day going, God, I'm about your business today. What are you doing? What are you saying? Because he knows that there may be somebody about to drown. He knows if there is somebody who is calling out, God, save me. And he needs to send somebody strong in the faith to pick up the person that's weak in the faith. He knows. But see, if we don't know what he's saying or what he's doing, we may miss that very person who stands before us that God is wanting us to put a hand out and say, let me help you up. Come on. Come on. You we, we won't see it. All we'll say is, oh, I'm so sorry. God, I have heard myself say that to people and want to vomit about it because I realize I'm sorry, but I didn't know what God wanted to do because I didn't ask him. Come on. And in that moment, I didn't have to be sorry. In that moment, compassion could have filled my entire being for that person to give him a hand. And when it didn't, they went away with just sorry. When I think about standing before God, how many people did I miss 
that I missed because I, all I cared about was if I knew enough to say something to them or so wrapped up in myself and my own agenda, what I wanted to do or what I had to do that day. I had no clue. I had no the clue that their life was falling apart. Why? Because my focus didn't switch to heavenly things, to, to, to seeing God and saying, God, here I am. I, I just about your business. I don't, what does it matter what I want to do today if somebody's life for eternity is missed? God wants us not to overlook people, That's it. not even if they're in doubt. Weak face. In, in fact, you, Jude tells us, you know, have mercy on some who are doubting. Don't get so wrapped up in your own pious self that you cannot see that they don't want to stay there. I mean, come on, have you ever heard somebody say, why would God let this happen? Everything in their life is falling apart and, you know, their finances are struggling, their health are struggling, maybe at work, whatever. Just a lot of things all at once. And it's like, God, where are you? Weak faith. Doubt has come in. But the thing is, you who are strong in faith can be right there to help them up. Let me help you. I know, I know the tragedy that you've gone through is more than I can even fathom. But God, what do you want to say to this person in this moment? Because, you know, I don't have the words. I haven't been through what they've been through. But God, you know exactly what will come in and settle some things in their life so that once again they can believe you. Maybe you've struggled with doubt in your own life. You know, a lot of times when, when we do, it's, it's, it could be because we just don't have a real personal relationship with God. It's more religion than anything. I've been there. I know what that's like. And other times it's because you are certain that God said this and God didn't say it. So it doesn't happen and that doubt comes in. And then the other thing is, is just getting our eyes off of him and what he's doing and uh, everything else. And here comes doubt. <sighs> Mercy. Mercy. You know, God knows the very heart of man. We, we can look at somebody and think we know them. But the reality is, is God really knows. He knows the very heart of you. He knows what makes you tick. He knows what he makes other people tick. He knows, uh, you know, the things that, uh, that cause us to turn to our flesh and the things that cause us to turn to him. Right. <sighs> when we keep our mind and our thoughts and our heart focused on him and what he's doing, being about his business, <laughs> then we could truly help those who are weak in faith. <sighs> I can tell you what doesn't work. Looking down on them for their weakness by uh, trying to tell, show them how strong you are in your faith. It goes south very quickly, I know from personal experience. No, Apostle Paul made it very clear. I realize we met it on the message, but it's powerful. That strength of faith is meant for service. 
It's not about status. That's right. Has right. nothing to do with ourself. Everything that God wants to do in this place today in your lives has nothing to do with me preaching a message. It has everything to do with what he wants to do in your life. It, it, it's not about the person ever. Ever. It's always about him and what he wants to do because he knows what you need. He knows what they need. I got more pages, but why? You know, I'm just going to read you some last few things that God says about you because he wants you to believe today. He wants your faith to increase. God is saying to you, son or daughter, that you have been set apart for his purpose. To come alongside and help other people around you who are in need of help. There can be multiple different ways and areas of life that people need help in. And it may be that some don't know God at all or some are simply struggling in their faith to believe. But he has set you up to be that help in their life. <sighs> and guess what? <laughs> you don't have to Google the answer. You don't. You don't have to Google how to help somebody who's went through a tragedy because he knows. God knows what keeps you awake at night. He knows what causes your mind to race on end. He knows when you feel alone in a room full of people. And he knows when you just need to be alone for a few minutes. Nothing about you takes him by surprise. He knows your questions before you ask them. Do you know he knows that about others too? God wants you to know today that all of, he knows all about you and he loves you still. And he wants to use you in this city to bring him in. He wants you <laughs> to not keep him to yourself anymore. Don't keep him to yourself anymore. Just as Jesus laid his life down for you, <laughs> now let's go lay our life down for others. You know, we have to give time and effort and, <laughs> and love and kindness and compassion. Why? For their, the sake of life for them today and eternity. Melissa, would you come please? We know we can't do it without a spirit. <laughs> so you who are strong in faith, as God is increasing your faith today, and he works through you to touch another life. His spirit can bring something to remember. It's at any moment that you may need for somebody else. He gives gifts at his will to be used to help another life. You know, I, I have this in my notes. Maybe a word of knowledge or healing or you never know. Maybe he just might use you to work a miracle in this month of miracles. Because he's doing the work through you. <laughs> God, I, there's a lot of words, but it's not about me. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you 
are doing in these people today. That you so desire for them to see themselves the way you see them. Yours. And that they have everything that they need to go out into the everywhere they are and you will work through them, God, because they take you with them. You are in them. You have given us your spirit. You have given us your word. So I thank you. I thank you for what you do right now. I can't pray a good enough prayer. I can't say enough words. God, it's, it's you. So I, I just thank you for what you're going to do in this moment, in their hearts and in their lives. So I, we just invite you, God, in, in to just, <laughs> I, I just, I just stop and say, here you go. Here you go. Here you go. The altar, altar is open. If you felt weak in faith, you need some help. <laughs> Where's the help? If you've never been born again, chat in, come to the altar. Right now I want everybody, if you're not at the altar, I want you to stand and I want you to worship God. Melissa's going to sing and I know that God's got something stirring in you. So just let it go. But he's going to move. Melissa.
Thank you for Jordan right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Here's a hand, Jordan. Take it. I'm pulling you up today. I'm pulling you up today. There's a lot of a lot of things that <laughs> oh you thought this was it this was it and and it's like okay God why what's going on here <laughs> but see he's given you some answers recently he's told you some things already to to help you start walking the right path and and get back in that line because it it had gotten a little fuzzy for a little while but he's already got you back on the path and he says now just trust me i want you to trust me i'm not going to show you 10 steps ahead because you won't believe you can get there i want you to trust me for this step trust me for the step tomorrow and trust me for the step after that because every step you take and you keep your eyes on me I will get you to the 10 steps ahead where what, what I already know I'm going to do but I want you to trust me right now trust me today for the one step thank you God thank you Father thank you Father How good you are, God. How good you are, God. Speak of my goodness. That you may boast about Yeah. How good How good he is. How good he is. That open door. That open door that you're looking for. It's opening. You're going to see it. You're going to see it. I want to say as soon as tomorrow, but I don't know that that's what God is saying. So I'm not going to actually say that he's saying that, but you're going to, I see it opening. You're going to see it. Go ahead and walk through it. 